Hi, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore. Welcome to my video series. Today I'm coming to you with an important update for dependents pass holders working in Singapore with a letter of consent. There's been an important change announced by the Ministry of Manpower in the last 48 hours, and that is that from the 1st of May 2021, dependents pass holders won't be able to apply for a new letter of consent to continue working in Singapore. For those that have already got a letter of consent and a dependents pass, you will be able to continue to work until your LOC or your dependents pass actually expires. It's at that point that if you wish to continue working, you're going to need to decide whether or not to apply for an employment pass or an S pass. We're going to explore these in a little more detail today, as well as what the current status is and what some of the things that you might want to think about are if you are impacted by this rule change. So let's get started. Under the current framework, those that are on a dependence pass or a long-term visitor pass who are the unmarried spouse or children of a Singapore citizen or permanent resident can apply or their employer can apply for what is called a letter of consent. And that is the Ministry of Manpower's approval to allow you to work for that specific employer. Now this has been a great solution for a lot of Australian expat families, whether you're doing some part-time work, relief teaching, running a small business, whatever it may be, but not sufficient enough to actually wish to go on an employment pass or an S pass. But this is what is all set to change. So let's have a look at what your options may be if you are working in Singapore and do hold a dependence pass. Now, what are your options if you are working in Singapore on a letter of consent? There are five key options to think about. The first one is you can apply for an employment pass or an S pass. Now employment passes carry minimum salaries, they often require relevant degrees or studies that have been completed, and it must be a managerial, executive or specialist field for most of us as Australian expats. Now these minimum salaries are officially $4,500 a month, but as we get older they will continue to increase. For an S pass the requirements are a little less stringent. The minimum salary is only two and a half thousand, but you may find that there is more difficulty in having these approved. So that's option one. Option two is if you're running a small business, if you employ a local Singaporean or permanent resident and pay them at least 1,400 Singapore dollars a month and pay them at least three months CPF, and you own at least 30% of the business, then you may be able to continue your LOC and continue running your business in Singapore. This is option three. If you don't meet those criteria and do work in Singapore, you can apply for an extension. That extension could be granted up until the 30th of April, 2022. Now the downside with that one is as you get to the end of April 2022, you're going to be faced with the same dilemma and you're going to need to make some decisions. Option four, which may not be a particularly attractive option for many of you, but it may be the only option that you have, is to simply cease working in Singapore. Option five, and certainly one I would recommend considering, because at the end of the day, a lot of people are working not just for the income, for the salary that it generates, but for our own mental health, for that sense of fulfillment, is to actually join some volunteer organisations, spend your time getting involved in some of the local charities, or even join some of the local support groups. This is going to be a stressful time for a lot of families we know, so if you are feeling overwhelmed, if you are feeling stressed, please do reach out because you may find that there are a lot of people in this same position. So that's what your five options look like. Now, there isn't a silver bullet. It is early days, so there may be further announcements. There may be further options that are announced. We will be keeping everyone updated on this, but they're your options as they currently stand. So if you are impacted 
let's have a look at some of the quick and easy ways you can investigate to start saving a bit of money each month if you are finding that you may lose a bit of your household income. The first one, if you own a property in Australia, you have a mortgage, you have a home loan, consider refinancing your debt. If your interest rate starts with a four, you're paying too much. Chances are these days, if your interest rate starts with a three, you may also be paying too much. Investor rates for expats often start with twos at the moment, the low to mid twos. So certainly worth investigating. This could be an easy way for you to save money. So that's option one. Option two, if you carry credit card debt, this can be an incredibly easy and rapid way to waste money every single month. So if you do find that you've got a large credit card balance that you're trying to get rid of, consider transferring it to a zero interest rate card. There are a number of banks and institutions that will allow you to consolidate your debt and offer you a 0% rate for a fixed period of time. That's gonna give you a good opportunity to get rid of that debt, then cut up the card and never use it again. That's option two. Option three is to review your budget. Get your credit card statement, get your bank statement, go through it line by line, and work out all those expenses where you have no idea what they are or didn't even know you were still paying for them and get rid of them. Whether it's Spotify, Netflix, whatever other ongoing recurring payment that we've got that we've set up years ago that's just continued to be deducted from our account, find those simple line items that you can get rid of. It's gonna take you a little bit of time, it's going to be small savings, that can add up over time. So that's option three. Option four is to seek a reduction in your rent. If your lease is coming up for renewal, ask your landlord for a discount. You can go onto the URA website. You can just Google URA. We will put a link in the notes here. You can find out exactly what the recently leased properties have been leased for and work out if you can save a bit of money. Now, if you find that similar properties are going for the same or higher than you're currently paying, maybe it's time to downsize. Maybe it's even time to move into a different area, a different suburb, different district, and save money that way. But certainly one worth exploring. That's option four. The fifth and second last quick saving tip is to review your personal insurances. So here I'm talking about health insurance, life insurance, disability cover, trauma or critical illness cover, and income protection or salary continuance. Now an easy one to save money is if you're not working anymore and have income protection, that's probably an easy one to get rid of. But do make sure you seek professional advice here and you're not giving up on any benefits that you would otherwise be entitled for. You may find that you're overinsured and you could create some additional savings that way by simply reducing the level of cover. You may even find that your insurer is offering discounts by simply reapplying for a new policy. So do make sure you seek advice and consider your options here. My final tip for you is to consider where you shop. Now, a lot of Australian expats, we come into Singapore, we simply go to the nearest grocery store and quite often it's not the cheapest. Consider some of the online options. There's Red Mart, there's Shopee, there's QB Foods. There's so many great options that mean you don't even have to leave the house these days. You'll find most things are there. Most things are probably a lot cheaper than you're currently paying. So consider your options. Even do a quick Google search for any promo codes that may offer you a higher discount. There's simple, easy ways to save money every single week on your grocery bills just by considering your options. Ask your friends where they shop. Do a quick Google search. Have a look at some of the different options out there. I know this is going to be a difficult time for many. I know this news is going to come as a shock to many Australian expat families in Singapore. If you're stressed, if you're concerned, start exploring your options, start working out how that income can be replaced, start considering what's going to be next for you if you are going to be impacted by these changes. And of course, as always, seek advice early. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to have the conversation with you work through your options and explore next steps and what needs to be done. 
I hope this update's been helpful. I hope you're keeping well, and please do feel free to reach out if you do have any questions. Thank you for tuning in.